No, no. Okay. I think it's more or less fine. Uh, we should close the door, I suppose. So we can start. So how, how many of you actually know something about GIS? If you can... And those people there are smiling. What, what, what is the reason? Are you GIS developers? No, 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 behind you. I mean, the, the, the two back. So today we're going to uh, introduce this uh, topic and then uh, see some of the uh, open source technologies that we can use for our GIS projects. I'm not going to speak about the state of the art of GIS at all today, which is actually uh, software by Esri. My, some of you might have heard about this. We're not going to talk about that because um, we are going to focus on open source and what is freely available and that we can use and download freely on from the, from the internet. So let's start with, with the definition Many of you here are already from IT background, so I'm, I might go a little bit faster than uh, I, I normally would if you weren't, but I want to introduce some of these definitions. If you know them already, it's good just for uh, taking a look at these things again. What is an information system? It is an organized set of procedures, human and material resources used to gather, store, process, and communicate information for a set goal or scope. I mean, an information system doesn't have to be a computer, as you imagine. An information system can be anything that you can use to gather, store, and process information. Now, we are going to, to, to speak a lot about uh, spatial data. If you don't know what spatial data is, this is a, um, a very simple introduction. As you can see here, um, we will see Mr. Aronoff very often because he's one of the people who uh, was pivotal in the developing of definitions in the, in the GIS uh, world. A geographical reference data or spatial data is any data that can be represented by a point, a line, or a polygon, as you can see there. And we have a set of coordinates here. We have a point, a line, or a polygon. This is actually spatial data, simple as this. Then we have very often these two, in GIS, we have very often these two definitions. We have georeferenced information, geospatial information. The difference is it's very, very subtle. And generally, they are used as, as synonyms. I mean, the, there, there are some books which make no difference. Every document, georeferenced information is every document or event referred to a particular portion of Earth's surface. This is what we call georeferenced information. Geospatial information is every document or event, as you can see, it's the same, that is also represented from a cartographic point of view. So generally, you, you speak about geospatial information in association with a cartographic point of view. And uh, as you can see, it, it's, ve it's a very, very, very similar. We, we, we might use them both, depending on how we prefer. Um, then, okay, we have seen now what is spatial data. Now we can see some other definition. When we have spatial data, generally in a GIS system, still I didn't tell you what GIS is, but some of you know already the definition, but I'm, I'm waiting to keep up, to, you know, to build the, su the suspense. Um, we have, together with spatial data, sp very often an attribute, attribute data. What, what is this? Together with a point or a line or a polygon, we, we add some information. In this case, for example, in this point, the information is 2,1. This is the coordinates. But to this point, actually, we could have another kind of information. This could be a tree, or it could be a bench, and this could be a park. We, we're going to see this very, very soon. Um, then we have the representation. So how, in, in how can we represent the spatial data in either on, on the computer or simply on, a, on, a, on, a, on another system? We can represent it in, with ob in object mode or image mode. This is mostly with, I mean, generally with computers only. So in object mode, individual spatial objects can be defined as point or line or polygons. 
In image mode, individual spatial objects can be defined as a set of contiguous cells, which are known as regions. Um, because, of course, the, the, when you have an image, this image is going to be taken by the computer and split in many little cells, and these cells will contain an attribute. If you take, for example, uh, this, you could divide it in many little cells, and an attribute could be, for example, the color in a special point, in a specific point. Normally, we have representation of spatial d d uh, data in layers. This is a set of layers. Normally, this is what you, you will find in GIS systems. Uh, you have a orthophoto. This is a photo, for example, of, a, of the Earth. Then you have a parcel framework, ownership, tax, and part. This is an example, for example, of a GIS which can be used for some administrative purposes. It is a set of special data stacked on top of each other. So now we introduce special data. We introduce the attributes, so now we can answer finally what this question. What, what is a geographic of a just spatial information system? So who, kn who, knows, who, who knows a definition already? Who could give a definition of you? Are you shy? Or <laughs> Are you all shy? <laughs> okay, we have many definitions. It depends if, if we see it from a technological point of view or from an organizational point of view. Those who, of you who are interested in IT most probably will like more this definition. Those of you or, who are doing something which is administrative related or, uh, I don't know, anything, even sociology, psychology, f philosophy, any kind of other studies which are not strictly technical could be interested in the definition I will give later. So in, from a technical point of view, it is a set of tools for collecting, storing, retrieving at will, transforming and displaying spatial data from the real world for a particular set of purposes. Mr. Aronoff, as usual, any manual, so it, it's not necessarily a computer, any manual or computer best set of procedures to store and manipulate geographically referenced data. We know that geographical referenced data, we said it's a data which we can uh, uh, attached to a specific portion of Earth. So these are two definitions from the technical point of view. I want to stress the fact that it shouldn't be computer-based. It could be actually non-computer-based. From an organizational point of view, this is what makes, in my opinion, um, GIS very useful, useful, and this is why it's g gaining more and more momentum, especially in the last years, thanks to the development of, uh, of technology. It is a decision support system involving the integration of spatially referenced data in a problem-solving environment. This is a definition given by Cohen in 1988. So basically what we have, it is, it is a system that helps us to take well-informed decisions. So this is why we, we use it. So we can sum up everything that we said. We can define GIS as a structure constituted by a power, powerful set of instruments and technologies committed to acquire, store, manage, transform, analyze, and visualize georeferenced spatial data. The scope of a GIS is to help us analyze spatially referenced data and make well-informed decisions. So this is why it could be useful, whatever your business is, whatever you're doing, as a work, this is why GIS could be useful for you. It can help you take decisions. So which are the questions that a GIS answers then? There are five basic questions that a GIS can be used to answer. These were described by Walker and Miller in 1990. What exists up at a particular site or location? Where are certain conditions met? What changes have occurred over time and where have these changes occurred? What are the social, economic, or environmental impacts of a particular change in the use of land? What will happen if the existing land use for a particular site is altered to another type of use? You can see that you have a lot of possible applications for this. For example, you're looking for a restaurant. What is, exists at a particular site or location? I was looking for something here, and I can use, for example, TripAdvisor. And the attributes of this uh, uh, point, which says here is the restaurant, are the reviews. The review of a point could be an, the, the, the attribute. Where are certain conditions met? Imagine that you want to build a house, and you want to build a house in a position where the, um, 
the soil is flat there is no dependence of the of the soil is not 20% you want to build it where it's flat so you can use a GIS system to take a decision where to build a house or you want to build a house where the sun is strong so that you can have solar cells for your hot water you can still again use um, a GIS system for taking these decisions in order to answer these questions of course the, the GIS must know this system must know what it is that we have in its database, where it, it is located, of course, and how it relates to other features. What are the uh, um, relationships between this feature and another? So what are the, compon the components of a GIS? We have basically um, spoke about all these things, and let's put them together. A, uh, a GIS needs data. Otherwise, we are talking about <laughs> nothing. Then we need organizational structures and work methods. Work methods could be the way that we analyze this data, for example. Then we have software components. This is the software that we use for, uh, for this analysis. And then hardware components, a computer, digitizer, plotter, printer, media, reader, etc. So what is inside a geodatabase? A geodatabase is the system that will use all this information and will put them and keep them together. You can see that in a geodatabase, you really have a, a lot of stuff that you can put. Normally in a database, you have um, certain kind of data. In a, in a geodatabase, the, the interesting part is that you have these feature classes. You have polygons, lines, routes, and points. You can have, for example, topology, and this is, and then, kind of same things that you normally have in a normal database, tables. You can see it's, it's really a lot of stuff that relates to geographical data, which normally doesn't appear in a, in a standard database. What are the applications? We have really a lot of applications. We can uh, sum them up in these two points. Environmental landscape analysis and control. Um, and then we can do some activities planning, management decisions. For example, the GIS was used in the, in the early 60s to decide about marketing. It is, it is a tool that was actually used a lot for marketing purposes at the beginning. So we want to know how we are penetrating a certain market. Imagine that you want to know how many people in my district are using, um, uh, they have they are using UPC. Imagine that you are UPC, for example, to name a company. We want to know how many people are using UPC and how we are penetrating the market. So for marketing purposes, we might take some management decisions. We see that we are not penetrating this market very well. We start to send people to make some advertisement. Then we can also take environment landscape oriented actions. Imagine that we are analyzing um, the risk of a earthquake or the risk of floods. So we can take decisions in this, in this direction. Then we can also make research in e environment li landscape fields. What kind of scales? I mean, these objects that we are discussing, how big they are? Are they small, big? They can be very small. They can be as big as Earth. So we have four kinds of scales. Micro local. For example, our area of interest could be a warehouse, a facility. We have local, which could be a city. Then we have regional, imagine a collection of cities. Then we have national, continental, and global. I give you an example of a micro local. This is a NATO base. So we could, for example, we would like to know something more about this, this uh, NATO ba base. When you add the layer on top of this, you start to, to see, again, something more interesting. So this is the first layer that we have here is a is an orthophoto. This is a picture that has been taken. This is located in Germany. I mean, I, I think it doesn't exist anymore, but it was interesting because you have the family housing here. And you, you, as you can see, here we have a polygon which is saying something. It, ha it has an attribute here, which is what it is, family. Then mess all gym. And then you have all these things. So it's, it's actually giving us some, some information. You have polygons with an attribute. Then we have something which is uh, more interest, more very familiar for you. This is a local, for example, the city, and it's subdivided in districts. 
we are using an attribute, for example, giving a name to certain parts of the, of the city. It's not the full districts, it's a few districts and then some areas of interest. This is a regional, this is, for example, uh, this that you see here is this portion of Italy. It's a, a region that we have. And here you can see a hydrographic information, so you know all the, the, um, the water, um, all the hydrographic uh, information of Basilicata. And that's another, this is another thing, this is the global horizontal irradiation. It gives an idea, idea of where uh, the sun is actually stronger, in case you want to put some solar cells. And then we have, of course, a global, which is the whole world. And as you can see here, we have some information. This is uh, areas which have a tropical or subtropical weather and, and so on. So we decide what kind of data we want, we want to, uh, to handle here. So now we have introduced GIS. I gave a lot of definitions. I, I, is everything clear? Because now we might see a bit something in, in, in action. So any of you want to ask something? No. OK, very good. So we will speak a bit about web mapping tools, um, desktop applications, and geospatial libraries. So we have um, these three interesting softwares here, um, Map Server, Map Server, GeoServer, and OpenAIS. I, de I decided to, to name these three products because these are the most used in uh, open source GIS applications. So after you have a GIS, you might want to bring this to the world. So you, you might want to publish it on the web, for example. And this is what MapServer is. MapServer is an open source platform for publishing spatial data and int interactive mapping applications to the web. Uh, of course, we want to visualize this data. We want to use it. And this server will help us publish these maps that we, we have created with, with um, geospatial information attached to it to the web. GeoServer does more or less the same thing. And um, as you can see here, it is an open source server written in Java. It allows users to share, process, and edit geospatial data. Open layers, it's something slightly different it is an open source JavaScript library for displaying map data in web browsers. Uh, what is the difference between this, the first two and the last one? The first two are used for publishing maps and making them available on, on the web. The last one helps displaying dynamic maps and has, uh, helps display in, um, in a very powerful way the geospatial data using map server geo server but we will see that not only using this this ones so let's go in detail about map server map server is the is very old it was originally developed with support from nasa 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 uh, sorry sorry for the very bad pronunciation is is it nasa or nasa or nasa okay and so map server is written in c++ it runs a, as a CGI program in a web server. It offers WMS and WFS. This is web mapping service and uh, web feature services. So it provides the maps and the features. The features are the things that we have on the map. It is released under an MIT style license. And it is not a complete GIS. Because, for example, you cannot easily e edit the uh, data and there are no analysis tools. We have seen that a GIS system provides some analysis tools. So it is useful to, to publish a map and the information attached to it, but still we need something more to play with the data that we have there. GeoServer is instead written in Java. So you see that the first difference is one is written in C++, the other one is written in Java, and uh, it can run as a Java applet. It offers also, that I made a mistake, uh, also offers WMS, WFS services. It is released under a different license. It allows users to share, process, and edit geospatial data and display dynamic maps. It is used by many uh, organizations. 
most, uh, there are some very nice examples that we can see um, from, uh, for use of GeoServer by FAO, uh, UNEP, World Bank, Global Mercury Observation System, and, and others. We could actually see something now. Um, so if we, I, I save some of this stuff, and let's see, for example, what, what they did with um, GeoServer in FAO. So this is a GIS system which is actually running on, uh, on the FAO uh, web server. And it gives information about regional fishery and what are the, uh, the, gover the governmental bodies depending on, wh on where you go. So let's say you want to know um, about a certain area. You want to know in, in EU what's, what's going on there. So as you can see, we can move here, and we can we have a set of layers here on the, on the right. And this set of layers will give us information about the area of competence, which are the members of this um, fishery body, which, as we say, it's EIFAAC, it's the European one. And we can also play with the layers, removing those we are not interested in. in. For example, we're not interested in what are the FAO fishing areas, and we only want to see what are, which ones are the members of this uh, governing body. So we can remove all the, uh, the layers which we are not interested in. As I, as I shown before, it is a set of stacked layers. And we see that these are the members, and for example, Serbia, uh, Montenegro and Macedonia, they are not members of the European, uh, of this European fishery body, so they will not obey, let's say, to what the standards set are. As you can see in this GIS system, we have the ability of zooming in, just like, I mean, for most of you, this is something which is not very special because you have seen it every day when you're using Google Maps, but what I'm trying to, to explain here is wh what is behind it, how, how it works, and what you can do with it. Um, so this is an example of GeoServer plus open layers. Let's go, let's go on and let's return to where we were. So we were talking about GeoServer. Now, we have also open layers. We were discussing about this one. This is, uh, is an API for building web-based geographic applications similar to Google Maps and Bing Maps. There are no server-side dependencies. You don't need to install anything on your server. It is generally used in conjunction with Map Server, GeoServer, Google Maps, Bing Maps, etc. So basically what these uh, uh, open layers do is you have, it is, it is an API written in JavaScript that allows you to um, to go and interface map server geo server something which is already available on the web it could also be for example google earth you want to use that one this has, has advantages and co some complications why you wouldn't want to use for example google uh, maps in certain uh, in certain situations. Imagine that you are developing a system for uh, your company and it runs on an intranet. Well, there are some license limitations about Google Maps that say that you cannot use Google Maps on the intranet unless you pay a fee to Google. So in this case, for example, you might want to use Map Server or Geo Server depending on what is the uh, budget that you have. We introduce now all these map serving uh, applications. Now we're going to introduce some of the desktop applications that we have here. But before going, doing that, I still want to, to show some other examples to you. And if there is something that you are curious about, just you know, um, ask. So I would like to show you another implementation the one that we saw before was an implementation made with, made with GeoServer and Open Layers. This is actually an implementation made with Map Server. And uh, as you can see here, we have the Wind Atlas. This is Ireland, and we want to know some information about the wind. 
we can actually um, check where the wind is stronger we can also switch between layers let's say we want to see we want to use a, a Google satellite map or we want to use OpenStreetMap which is a uh, uh, we will see later this is a, 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 an, again an open source uh, map we have some other reference layers here we want to see the counties of Ireland and we want to know and see which uh, which areas are suffering the most in terms of uh, the strength of the of the wind so as you can see this this information information can be useful for um, I don't know imagine that you want to organize a regatta so you want to know from which place you might want to go with your boat and so that you are sure that you will have some nice wind and you can sail very well uh, before going on I also want to see another thing so you, you might want to ask wh why when and why we would want to use uh, map server or geo server when do you use one and where do you use another there is an interesting article here which you are not seeing apparently why did <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, but. Okay. And we're back to this. So, when using one or the other, uh, it is a matter of, of, um, of two things speed and the rendering ability. Um, GeoServer is normally much slower than uh, MapServer because it's written in Java. And while MapServer is written in C++, so what you have is you, don't, you have a compiled source code which generally gives an, a very good and uh, sp speedy uh, responsive output. So it is actually depends on, on whether you want to uh, make some changes, what is your la the language of your knowledge, it depends on these things. In general, map server is the fastest of the two. So it depends if you have or not a uh, requirement about speed. Now we are going to speak a bit about the desktop applications, and this has been already up for a while, so we are going to sp speak about QGIS. This is formerly known as Quantum GIS. Uh, this application is arguably the best GIS tool in the free and uh, open source software community, which is called FOSS. It can visualize, manage, edit, analyze data, and, compa and compose printable maps. Because after you have done your analysis, you might want to make to a printout of what you have done. Imagine that you want to show uh, some information about, uh, again, where the sun is the strongest so that you might want to print a map and give it to your uh, to, to, to someone who might want to, to, to build a house for as I said with the solar cells so let's see how quantum JS looks like so as you can see first thing we can create, edit and visualize analyze and publish geospatial information with QGIS desktop QGIS is, is made of several parts and now what we are seeing here is really the desktop application. This is how normally a GIS application running on the desktop looks like. On top you have the layers. The layers are these layers one on top of each other which contain some spatial data. Then you have browser for importing here. This data and then you can see here you have a, a whole set of tools for manipulating the polygons the, um, the lines the points and with this application you actually build your GIS um, product QGIS also incorporates a browser this browser gives you an ability to check and see before opening files whatever you have but you can also see all the shape files you can take a look uh, and have a, a glimpse of what you have in, in your 
geodatabase. Geo then what is might be useful and interesting is that now QGIS also runs on Android. Some of you are Android developers, I'm pretty sure. And uh, as you can see here, you can start to actually do GIS um, editing on an Android device. This is taken from a tablet. You have the same set of tools here. So you can have your maps and you can add your features. Then also you, we have a web client. After you have everything set in place, you can publish Q, uh, QGIS projects on the web using a client which is given by QGIS. Now there is another one. This is UDIG. UDIG is, is useful. It does more or less the same things of QGIS, but what is, this is most used for is for packaging your GIS product and selling it to somebody. At least this is what most people are doing with uh, UDIG. You can personalize it. You can easily change the everything. You can make it very, very like the way you like it. And then you can attach the, the geodatabase to it and distribute it. The goal is to provide a complete Java solution for desktop GIS data access, editing and viewing. It is commonly used as a framework for building other GIS platforms and applications, such as, and then we have in this, did with Quantum, with uh, UDIG, applications like Diva GIS and DUSE, Distant Early Warning System for Tsunamis. Okay, so for example, you have all the information that you might need about the risk in a certain area for tsunamis, you can package all this data that you put together and then you can give it to the users. The users can do analysis on their own computer offline. They don't need to be online to do this analysis. This is an example. This is, this is Diva GIS. It has been made by the Centro Internacional del, de la Papa. Okay, this is the International Center of Potatoes. In, I know it's funny, but <laughs> this, this is an international organization which actually exists and takes also your money because you are Austrian taxpayers. And Austria happily gives money to CGIAR, which gives money to this one. And, uh, and these three, World Bank, FAO, and IFAD, contribute to CGIAR because these are main sponsors. So this is actually a tool for making an analytical mapping and data exploration for potato genetics. This is an area of uh, South America and as you can see here you have some analysis. This is wrapped up in an application. This application is given to the people who have an interest of doing some uh, potato genetics analysis. I think none of us is into potato genetics here. Uh, are you? No. Okay. But this is useful for your own application. I would suggest you to take a look um, at, at UDIG. I, I think many of you can code in Java. How many of you can code in Java here? So it, this is an open source application. Of course, you can modify, it to modify this to your own needs and uh, even make it more uh, customize it. And then you can use it to sell your own GIS product to your customers. Then we are kind of reaching the very quick, the end. I was told to speak about 50 minutes, so I calculated 40 minutes and then 10 minutes if we want to discuss a little bit what we have seen. So we are close to the, to the end. Now, among geospatial resources that I would like to uh, introduce, we have OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is very interesting. This is a collaborative project to create a free editable, edit, editable map of the world. It is released under the ODBL, Open Database License. It is constantly updated by a community, and there we have the, the, uh, this link. So how does it look like? It looks like, if I manage to show you, it looks like this. No, I still don't manage apparently. Go 
sorry, give me a second. So we go into there is okay. Before we can move to some examples, I will I will quit uh, using PowerPoint, so I should be able to see the rest. Um, we will see OpenStreetMap, but before moving forward, I would like you to to write down possibly these two links, which are could be interesting in case you want to know a little, learn a little bit more about JS. OSGeo, this is open source Geo. This is a web. Uh, site that includes all the all the possible information about open source projects for uh, open source projects about GIS. You will find all the information about QGIS, UDIG, and all everything that we have seen. Then there is the Open Geospatial Consortium. This is giving all the standards that are generally used by these applications. Okay, so. Let's take a look. Uh, it looks a bit, I don't know why. It always looks so bad on the Mac. <sighs> we have all this technology and then we cannot show properly. Okay. So let's take a look at OpenStreetMap. Let's see how it looks like. So this is OpenStreetMap. As you can see, again, it is a. It's been made by by people. This this map that you see here, it's made. It's it's a collaborative project and it's free. Why is it important that it's free? Because whenever you use a map from a third party, could it be Google or Bing, you might be in the need of paying a license. But if you're doing your own projects, you might want to have something. For example, even if you want to make a, a very small project about Vienna, you might, might want to have this kind of map free for your own use so that you don't have to pay a license to, to use it. So this is why it is so useful. Another thing that we might want to check out, and uh, this is part of uh, this set of things that I uh, it's not showing okay so I would like to show you open layers in action so as you can see open layers really has this ability of displaying uh, dynamic ma maps on anything I mean look how ugly is this map I don't know why they chose it but this is actually running most probably on top of geo server or map server and is a full feature map let's see some examples from you can see all these examples on uh, on open layers let's see for example how it looks like together with bing now we are using this is a normal bing map but what is interesting is that on this bing map you can add actually your own data because normally to do this, you need to interface dire directly with the APIs of Bing or the APIs of um, Google. But Open Layers is doing the work for you here. You will only use the APIs of uh, Open Layers, and then you will be able to interface but with whatever Google, Bing, your own maps. Okay, so I basically would would like to stop here. We have 10 minutes if we want to discuss something. And uh, any questions from you? No. I'm pretty sure that there is something, but if you if you if you want, you can do these things actually by yourself. The moment that you have a GPS, many of these GPS have an ability of tracking. You can go with the GPS, and you can take, for example, a walk on uh, on the cycle. You can take your bike and go on the cycling road if, if this is what you want to have, and then you can create a path. Of course, you, 
if there is not such thing, you have to create it yourself. It's about, or you have to buy it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's up to you to look for these things and, and buy them. These are collaborative projects. I'm, I'm sure that they were doing something on this, on this regard. For example, a collaborative project was Waze, which wanted to substitute, for example, to be a free uh, navigation system. And that was probably showing some of the, of the paths. What you're talking about is point of interest, or you really wanted the paths, the touristic paths. Yeah. I don't know. You can. You can. Oh, okay. So the question was if there is something uh, like OpenStreetMap for uh, touristic uh, paths. Mm, I'm not aware of this, but. Uh, I think that to a touristic path is actually a very uh, subjective thing because what you might consider uh, consider of touristic interest, I mean, in a collaborative project, let's say, since this is OpenStreetMap is a collaborative project, imagine that people might like certain things or might to, t to take some paths other than than others. So it, it's generally th there should be some commercial idea behind it and trying to sell some point of interest through. Uh, on the path, and this is actually what uh, softwares like TomTom do. Do some of uh, hotels are point of interest on this map, and then you. But it, it's it's very subjective. Uh, you you might find something. You might end up buying something. It depends. What are you planning to do? An application. Okay. So what we haven't seen when I was showing you the base is that there are other applications from mi micro local uh, GIS. Very interesting applications are about, for example, trying to understand, they did an application in the Fiumicino Ar airport in Rome. They wanted to try to understand which was the best area of the airport uh, for selling stuff. So I mean, what is the most visible, where the people are going the most. So an example of a GIS application, which is out of the box, is you put a sensor that captures the people entering in a, in a, deter, in a determined shop, you count the number of people, and then you count the number of people of the whole Fiumicino airport, and then you know in which shop people are entering the most. You can try to make an analysis whether they are entering because they like more um, what is on sale there or because maybe it's the closest to the entrance or it's the closest to another uh, point of interest. And then you can decide how much people should pay in terms of rent depending on how many people can get inside. This is another application. Um, we can go on with the questions. Something else? You didn't find it interesting. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. Can, can you speak up, please? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, uh, he wants to, to take the microphone because we are streaming this, and so if we you don't speak in the microphone, we will lose your question. Question. Uh, sorry. I will. I will. Uh, <laughs> the question is if there is any kind of uh, open project to build a web service with uh, maps. I mean, for offline maps, I know that there are, or for PC applications or mobile phones. I know that there are projects that you can take uh, basically open maps from open street maps and embed those maps in your application. But uh, do you know of any service to do the same with web services, not with applications? I have this. 
we have seen this. This is actually what I was talking about with Map Server and Geo Server. These are the the tools that I would recommend you to try to use for doing this project. So, with Map Server, you can um, publish on the web your own maps together with the features. Let's imagine that you want to publish, for example, the map of a supermarket, and the features are the names of the shop or um, where the phone or the uh, I don't know, the, the something of interest is, is located, or even the, the place where you actually you can find information. And then you can publish them on, on the web. Map Server and GeoServer will do exactly this for you. If you want, before, the, the normal workflow that you should use for doing this, you have to use some kind of desktop, desktop application like QGIS. You create everything, and then when you are ready, you will publish this map on the web. Then at this point, you, what you have on the web is simply a map, but you would like to make some, uh, to give people some tools to, to analyze this map. And that's where open layers uh, might come into the, into the picture. Because with open layers, then you have an ability of creating a user interface and have also people do some uh, analysis of, on this information. Um, so, so yeah. This is the normal workflow that you should use for this project. But you should start from the desktop application, creating your own map. You can take it from uh, Google. Then you don't need, of course, to uh, incorporate it into, you can simply load it when you have map server running. Or you might want to use OpenStreetMap. There are also downloadable uh, maps. And once you include this, then you can publish everything together with your uh, layers and they can include, uh, I mean, f layers can be raster maps, they can be vectors, or, or else. Okay, any other question? So how did you know GIS before? Uh, did, did this lesson give you something that you didn't know, or you knew everything uh, more or less already? You know, the, the power of this, uh, this technology again, I think, stays in the organizational uh, potential. It, can, it gives uh, a way to take immediate decisions based on the visualization of data. Uh, every, w you all have heard this saying, a uh, picture is worth a thousand words. And when you can actually visualize some data, when you have to take a decision which is related to a landscape or uh, a portion of the earth, uh, this this tool comes very very handy. It it gives you an immediate uh, idea of where you can intervene and what you can do, both in terms of uh, people on managing the people and all the resources. Um, recently, you have heard and that in Genoa, in in Italy, there's been a a, a big flood, and the city now uh, we had dead people and, and other situations. And for example, for many years before this happened, we had a geologist who was taking care of um, the environmental aspects of the city. And during those years, um, everything was more or less fine because uh, geologists are generally using GIS tools for making predictions about environment and what can happen. It is a tool that can make predictions also. Based on data, you can make predictions or you can analyze w already what the situation is and you can take action. I would like to close focusing more on this and just leaving you uh, an idea of a tool that you can use and or, or you can sell if you are programmers who are selling a product to customers, giving them something to take uh, decisions. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for joining and uh, see you next year, hopefully.